Um, hi everyone, so welcome to the Sprint Vortices, uh, Summer and Demos for Kiani and the other project, October 8th. So today we are going to uh, present, so we have several speakers with uh, with us today, so Edgar, uh, Joel, Xavi, Gary, and we are going to tell you what what, is, what we have accomplished, we have finished for, for this screen. So as always, so thank you all the community for all the inputs that, that you provide to us in the ways of issue or comments in the IRC, comments in the Istio Slack, emails. So that's very valuable. We see that that is growing and growing. Uh, and yeah, so as always, what we do in the spring, what we plan in the spring is public. We use the GitHub Kiali um, projects to see what are the big epics that we are working on, and more in detail, what are the issues that we have in backlog, we have in progress, in review, et cetera. We have, you know, please help us, add in comments, jump, participate on all of them, or any of them, just to give us feedback or something that could be more interesting for you to raise priorities or to tell us because you drive the, the, the project, right? Okay, so talking about the Spring for this is highlights, I guess that I'm going to give the mic to Edgar. So Edgar, would you like to, to comment about this new feature? Yes, yes. Well, I have some, I think that I, I will present two slides. This is one of the improvements in the graph itself. It's about the filters that are on the top in the toolbar. You can use now the find and hide text boxes to, well, basically to either highlight notes or hide notes that are not healthy or are healthy. And the animation that you are seeing, I am using the hide text box. And this is um, in typing there the, the healthy keyword, and that basically will hide everything that is healthy. As a result, well, you basically get a graph where you are seeing nodes that are not healthy. Uh, that might, well, you can use, clearly you can use this to at least have more focus on what what's failing in, in, your, in your service mesh. Um, Obviously this, well, not obviously, but uh, as I recommend, uh, you can use this keyword in a positive or it also accept the negation, uh, which is a bank in, in the beginning, a bank symbol in the beginning. Um, so that's it for this slide. The next one, please. And well, not sure if anybody have seen this tab in Kiali. This is the traffic tab. It's on all the details pages is in application and workloads and services. You can see this is the second tab in the, in the top. Uh, this have a small rework in its design because it, it was an umpire with our list, uh, mainly talking about the, the list of applications. It didn't have the same look and feel. So we did a little rework here and now it's, it will look exactly the same or Similarly, quite similarly the same as the other list used to provide more unified design. It got a few improvements, most, most notably uh, the sorting on the columns. So you can sort by status, name, and rate, and percent success, and also protocol. Um, all you can see that you we have inbound traffic and outbound traffic separately, but the sorting columns will work on both tables at the same time. So you you just need to click on one of the columns, either inbound or outbound, and both tables will will get sorted. And well, this table was a little confusing in the past. It was a hierarchy like a tree. So. We know that uh, from several users that this was a confusing format, so we migrated to a plain table list, basically by removing the services in the in, in this list. So you will only see you know application and workloads, and well, in the services you you will be seeing workloads too there. Uh, hopefully this will make it a little clear what's happening, yeah. and 
well, that's it for this slide. Okay, so thank you, uh, Edgar. I guess that now I'm going to stop sharing. Um, Joel is going to take the screen and he's going to share the news about the work that we are doing with the, the tracing uh, tabs. Hello. Uh, so, um, can I share my screen for yeah, that? Sure. Yeah, sure. Well, go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, if you text. <clears throat> so, can you see my screen here? I yeah. have a slide on a tracing page. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Uh, so, so the, the tracing page uh, as, um, was already present, of course, in, in Kiali, so under the workload details or service details or app details. And it has been uh, redesigned with a focus on trying to, to bring the, the better of the, um, the service mesh, mesh data, meaning that uh, we can show very generic information about our spans, but uh, we know that most of the span, spans in the service mesh context are generated by Envoy proxies. And because of that, we know a certain list of tags and we know the format that are used and we are trying to, we, we are now trying to, to leverage this. So the, uh, we can see here the new traces page. So under the trace details tab, <coughs> when we select a trace on the chart, uh, we will now have uh, this number of uh, some labels here showing uh, the number of spans, the apps involved, and uh, the arrows, and uh, new statistics. So these st statistics uh, are going to compare span, span or traces durations. So there are two kinds of durations. There is the full duration. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. There is the, the full duration of the trace and there is the span's average duration. They are not always um, strictly correlated because uh, spans can run concurrently. So both of them can be interesting to look at. Uh, and we compare these statistics with all the other traces displayed on screen and also with all similar traces displayed on screen. So, uh, so this, we introduced this new um, concept of similar traces. So we are going to look for, uh, for every trace displayed, the ones that have similar number of spans or, and similar uh, operations within span. So this way we can try to get some more meaningful comparison between traces. Um, uh, yeah, and, and we also added a link to the Jaeger comparison. So Jaeger has the comparison view to to be able to to view uh, several several traces at the same time, uh, view the difference between them. So we've got a link to Jaeger when when Jaeger is configured in in uh, Kiali. Then the other thing on the tracing page is the span details. So the, is the the other tab. Here, uh, when you still when you selected a trace, you can show the you can see the span details in the form of a table. So we use the um, similar design that we are using in other pages in Kiali with this table and sortable columns and a bunch of filters. And so the columns are the timeline. So now the the spans are displayed uh, as a flat list. Uh, and uh, ordered by default uh, according to their starting time. And we can also see the app and workload where the, that created the span. And there are links to jump to these workload or applications. Uh, also some summary. So every span here uh, is, uh, like I said at the beginning, some of them are created by Envoy, but it's not necessarily all spans that are created by Envoy. So here, for instance, I've got a span with component proxy, and it shows the data relevant for the service mesh, um, and that is provided by the Envoy proxy. So here we can see where uh, the request is sent or, or, or um, 
or when it's received, uh, who it's uh, received from, and with the response status, etc. Uh, but we we can also um, have the other spans as well. The one, the, for, for instance, this one was created by the Vertex framework, and this one, the first one is unknown. It's because it's my application who created the span and who did not um, mention the component explicitly. So we have all of this and the duration here uh, per span. So we leverage the open tracing semantics for for these spans, and um, <clears throat> And yeah, but that's basically it. And uh, we are still working on more statistics. Probably we, in the following sprints, we'll do more statistics about the, the traces, perhaps not per trace, but perhaps comparing more um, globally uh, different traces um, between them and the metrics-based comparison as well. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Joel. I'm going to share screen again. Browser, um, I guess that uh, now next, or Xavi is going to tell us about the news about the proxy status in, in Kiali. So, Xavi? Okay. Yep, mine. So, okay, um, we've introduced a uh, proxy status in, in, in Kiali, especially in, in the health. And and why that? Because uh, as you as you know, and every workload in the mesh has a sidecar, has this uh, envoy envoy proxy as a, as a proxy for every every workload. And this sidecar is a really a key component in the data plane. Without it, uh, all the magic of um, uh, the mesh are gone. Right? Then um, showing the status of every proxy of every envoy. Uh, in your mesh is crucial for troubleshooting and understanding what is happening in your mesh. Next slide, please. So, okay, it's moving. Right. Um, so um, uh, here in uh, in Kiali, what we've done is uh, add all the proxy status uh, of every every proxy in your mesh we've added in across across the console right um especially we added on on the health and then we added on at the pod level because at the end is at the pod level where we can specifically say a um where what what happened with this proxy um for example uh, on the overview page, what we can see is that uh, is that uh, we can we can see which applications are degraded because of uh, of the proxy is done. Um, then you can go to the you can go to the graph, and in the graph you can see, for example, in the workload uh, how is the status of that workload, and you will see that. Uh, here you have that you have zero synchronized uh, proxies, right? It means that you don't know what's going to happen. That this proxy has an old configuration, has an old configuration than the than the one that has the pilot, right? Because pilot in the in the control plane has what one version one version of that config, and is sent to every proxy that um, that it should be installed on and then if you don't have it uh, synced then the behavior might might differ again as I said here in the application you see the health and in the health you see what we commented which is that uh, here in this example you have one proxy that is not unsigned and then you can you can go to to the uh, pod level and then at pod level you can see you can definitely see uh, the status of it. We'll see uh, briefly. Uh, but yeah, at the end, is what what we are doing is is fetching this the comparison of the version of the config in in the envoy with the one in pilot. And yeah, in this case, for example, in this pod, 
what we see is that uh, that the uh, pilot sent a version sent a version of a configuration and here it says that uh, is a stale that uh, that specific envoy never answered to the update of this comment this config sorry so pilot has sent it and probably this uh, envoy is is broken so yeah one of the cool thing is like since we the, the service mesh is based on proxies uh having this information having the health of every proxy of every envoy it's it's a key for for understanding what is happening then um now you have it on the health so really quickly from the overview to up and then to workload level you can see what is happening um proxy proxy wise yeah and and that that's it Okay, so thank you, Tavi. That's, that's really cool. I just wanted to, to ask quickly, like, the, I think that that shows a great, like, you know, those types of features are really a great thing for showing off what Kiali offers to Service Mesh. Um, I was wondering, have you ever thought about doing, like, um, you know, kind of like the demo you were doing doing there, but in, like, a small video format to uh, that, something that could be, you know, just, just like a couple of minutes to show off those, those features? Or, um, something that could be like made public or... yeah sure well, i guess that we will have more longer for for the key data job so we are going yeah. to to continue with the with the, the demo we are recording yeah so, yeah no i didn't, didn't yeah. want to interrupt but yeah this this uh feature that we were working on this screen was to to you know to an ace to the, the integration of um, Kiali with other tools. Well, one of the tools that we integrate is Iterate. Iterate is a project to give a uh, service mesh advanced A/B testing capabilities. Basically, one when one of the problems that you want to solve when you install a uh, service mesh is how to scale, right? How to scale the microservices wall, and one of the of the operation that you do is, you know, for example, A-B testing or comparison or deploy new version of your microservices. And in that scenario, one of the, of the ideas is, oh, how I can scale that? Because it's, I manually need to check every new version of a microservice to that um, manually detect which version is better. Probably we can introduce some kind of bottleneck in my strategy to scale using a service mesh. So this is when this kind of projects enter, right? In a way that how I can respond to that questions. I deploy a new versions on how I can tell which version is better, right? So this is what, the, what Iterate does. So basically they propose to advance statistical algorithms, but in other contexts they can be also uh, learn like machine learning algorithms, similar to that, right, to give you the ability uh, using continuous experimenting to tell, okay, which version could be better about that. So uh, uh, something that I put here, the link, but I also prepared some, uh, you can see my Kiali, to show basically what, what I have. So I, I, I have a very short demo to show that. So I hope that you can see an application here, right? This is a electronic shop application. I guess that this is quite, um, uh, you can see my, my, my browser, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So the idea is that this application, we have several microservices here, mobile, web that are calling to a shop. And this shop is basically uh, selling books, selling video games and music, right? Um, and look, one in, in my microservices strategy, so I want to, you know, every domain is going to be developed individually. So and I want, at some moment I, I want to deploy a new version, right? For example, in the music service, I may have version one and version two. And you can see in Kiali, everything is, is looking well. So if I go to request per seconds, uh, I have a good number of requests per seconds. Everything is green, no errors. If I see in request percentage, probably it's okay. If I see response time, uh, I see, okay, probably something is more slow than other. And if I go to the details, you know, uh, is when I go there on the details and I want to, you know, I to check my local version, uh, is when I can see that, uh, oh, sorry, let me to, to see the metric by local version, right. 
now I can compare version one, version version two, and you can see, okay, one version is, is, is working better than other, right? But imagine that I want to, to enable some kind of automate uh, A-B testing. So this is what Ether8 is, is doing. So um, how is, why we integrate this project into Kiali. From Ether8, I can create this, uh, what we call an experiment. Experiment is that, okay, I deploy a new version, but I want to test it. Right? So let me to see music uh, version one versus version two. Okay, I want to test the, um, the name of space the electronic shop. I want to test the music. I want to compare the music version one versus the music version one. Um, this is the interesting thing that here I can define how I want to compare that. For example, I can compare by latency. I can compare by errors and probably I can add more advanced logic about what it means good for me or for my domain, right? This is what I want to do. In this case, I'm going to show you more or less how this works. I can define, um, I can define a, a criteria to, to compare and I can start the experiment. And what Iterate is going to do, it's going to start the experiment, it's going to starting to, uh, if I go to the, again, to the service, is going to automate and, and to create some kind of um, of traffic shifting is going to during the time is going to define you know an experiment that it uh, it take from five minutes or one hour or you know the time that you define is user configurable is going to uh, moving the, the the traffic from one version to another is going to collect metrics is going to apply the statistical algorithms to say uh, which version is better, right? And when it's done, right? When it's, for example, in this case, is is creating some iterations. So in this iteration, you say, hey, the the version that I think that is going to win is the, the version one. The probably the winning is thin. This is the assessment that is that is building, right? And after that, it's going to give you the details of all the all the methods that is taking to take the comparison. After that, it's going to automate the traffic. And it's going to say, okay, now that the version two or the version one is is better, so I'm going to move to the to the good version. Otherwise, I want to keep the old versions to avoid that. So this is, you know, one extra tool that Kiali offers in that strategy to to scale and you know to to allow you to to, to define or to use the service mesh in a integrated with your with your CI techniques. Okay, so that is. I want to share for for this feature, and I guess that next will be Gary that is going to tell us about the, um, the highlights of the Jagger team for the Spring 46. So, Gary, uh, right. have the mic. Okay. Um, as so for Jaeger itself, uh, we've released the upstream version of 120, and that's going to form the next uh, version of the product. Um, we've also been working on a, a multi-tenancy design uh, proposal. Uh, which was discussed recently at the, with the Jaeger community and has been approved. And so we're beginning uh, some proof of concept work on that soon. Um, we've also added support uh, for disabling the uh, clock skew adjustment. Um, that was uh, a mechanism that's been in Jaeger for a while that tries to compensate for tracing data being reported from di um, different systems where the clocks aren't synchronized. So it tries its best to um, to help compensate for that, but sometimes it has um, unwanted consequences. Um, so it's been decided to disable that by default. Um, and the, the final one is um, we've been wor working on a, a an alternative um, blob storage mechanism, a, a proof of concept uh, using file storage. Um, so th um, that's something that may uh, become a, a, a part of the product in the future. Um, on the open telemetry side, uh, we've added uh, support for a default configuration uh, because previously um, you were required to, to provide any sort of config configuration. Uh, there's also support for using <coughs> sorry, percentages in terms of memory limit, uh, the memory limiter, um, whereas before it was you had to specify a fixed amount. Um, there's been work on an authentication processor which is related to the you know, one step in terms of the multi-tenancy uh, designer pro uh, proposal. Uh, we've uh, also released um, a new version of the OpenTelemetry operator, which is keeping in step now uh, with the collector versions. 
Um, and finally, there's some been some bug fixes uh, related by, to the uh, group by tracing processor, which is the mechanism that's used to uh, collect the um, all the spans related to a trace, so you can do um, some post processing on it, like uh, tail based sampling. And um, that's it. Thanks. Okay, so thank you, Gary, for the updates. Um, thank you for all the the, the speakers to preparation. So I'm going to stop the the recording.